The JF-17 Thunder is currently one of the most notable combat aircraft, but of course it is not noteworthy in a similar manner as the F-35, Eurofighter Typhoon or Rafale, or even with its main rival, the Tejas. So what makes this aircraft matter? As the weapon detective, we're now investigating the JF-17 and seeking an answer to this question. Talking about the JF-17 is a tricky business. Some claim it is a highly successful combat aircraft, while others think otherwise. Depending on the point of view, they are both right. As always, before our analysis, let's look at the historical background and features of the JF-17. In the early 1980s, the Pakistan Air Force began to seek a new combat aircraft to replace its J-6, the Chinese-built version of the Soviet MiG-19. Until this time, Pakistan was just a good market for foreign aircraft manufacturers. But now, Islamabad wanted to build up a national aviation industry. In those years, Western countries were not keen on technology transfer. So, China was the most suitable partner for Islamabad's dream. Both countries had problematic relations with India, which made them natural allies. Besides, it was highly beneficial for Beijing, which focused on reaching new markets and increasing its regional influence. Another factor also made this cooperation more beneficial. In the late 1970s, the USA improved its relationship with China to counterbalance the USSR. So, China, which began to reach many advanced Western technologies, started a program on a new combat aircraft called Super 7. Through cooperation, Pakistan could reach Western technologies with low prices and free from restrictions. Two developments ended this dream. The 1989 Tiananmen Square protests and massacre ended the honeymoon between Beijing and Washington. Besides, Islamabad, which did not have enough money, had two options. Acquiring new foreign combat aircraft or creating an efficient national aviation industry. Pakistan chose to fulfill its urgent needs rather than to actualize a dream. And it decided to buy the best fighter of the time, the F-16. But because of Pakistan's nuclear program, the USA imposed many open and covered arm embargoes on this country. So, Islamabad realized the importance of the independent aviation industry and turned its face again to China. Pakistani efforts to create a national aviation industry were not new. In 1971, this country began to establish some aircraft overhaul facilities. In the 1990s, the Pakistan aviation industry, gathered under the umbrella of the Pakistan Aeronautical Complex, had reached some level of maturity. Also, China and Pakistan jointly developed the K-8 jet trainer. Now, they were ready for the next step. So, in 1999, the Pakistan Aeronautical Complex of Pakistan and the Chengdu Aircraft Corporation of China signed an agreement to develop and produce a new fighter jet together. This aircraft would replace the A5, F7, Mirage 3 and Mirage 5s of the Pakistan Air Force. For the Chinese side, this was a commercial cooperation. The People's Liberation Army Air Force had already begun to operate the J-10s, so it did not need a new fighter. Pakistan calls the new aircraft JF-17 Thunder, while China names it FC-1 Shalom. The initials JNF refer to the words join and fighter. Pakistan has chosen the number 17 to indicate that the new aircraft is the successor of the F-16. The name FC-1 means Fighter China 1. Thanks to using computer-aided design software, the design phase was short. Also, adopting some of the J-10's onboard systems onto the JF-17 helped further shorten this time and reduce costs. China produced the prototypes. The aircraft officially made its first flight on September 2, 2003, but it had actually met the skies for the first time on August 25, 2003. The development phase was relatively smooth, but there were some problems too. The JF-17 had the Klimov RD-93 turbofans. India, one of the main customers of the Russian military systems, lobbied to prevent this engine's sale. 
this lobbying effort would be successful until 2007. The first two pre-production JF-17s arrived in Pakistan on March 23, 2007. They were used for flight evaluation rather than actual combat deployment. The Pakistan Air Force received the serial production JF-17s in 2009. In the same year, production in Pakistan began. The JF-17 reached squadron level operational capability in 2010. Pakistan produces 58% of the aircraft's airframe including the front fuselage, wings and vertical stabilizers, and executes the final assembly works. The airframe is generally made of aluminum alloys. Some critical areas made of high-strength steel and titanium alloys partially. It makes the aircraft heavy. So, if we look at the Block 1 variant, we may say that the JF-17 is a 3rd plus generation aircraft rather than a 4th generation due to production materials. Its fly-by-wire flight control system is also primitive to some degree. But also, the JF-17 has some advanced features like the diverterless supersonic inlet that eliminates all moving parts, which makes it far less complex and more reliable than earlier diverter plate inlets. The removal of the moving parts also reduces the weight of the aircraft. Although Pakistan initially intended to equip the aircraft with a Western radar, the JF-17 is equipped with the KLJ-7 radar, a miniaturized version of the KLJ-10 of the J-10s. This radar can detect up to 40 air, ground and sea targets. It can track 10 targets and send two missiles to them simultaneously. The KLJ-7 can detect a target with a radar cross-section of 5 square meters at a range of 105 kilometers. The first 51 JF-17s are Block 1 variant. Now, Pakistan is modernizing Block 1s to Block 2 standards. The production of the Block 2 JF-17s began in 2013. This variant has aerial refueling capability and a more advanced avionics and electronic warfare suite. The use of composite materials reduces the weight, which increases the payload. But there is a price to pay for everything. These enhancements make the aircraft nearly twice as expensive. The Block 3 variant has the KLJ-7A active electronically scanned array radar, helmet-mounted display, more advanced Western avionics, 3-axis digital fly-by-wire flight control system, and an infrared search and track system. Besides, it is equipped with the advanced infrared missile warning system used in the J-10C and J-16. The use of composite materials is increased. It has the more powerful WS-13 turbofan. By reducing the weight and increasing the power, the Block 3 variant can reach a maximum speed of Mach 2. The WS-13 has better reliability than the RD-93. Also, unlike the current engine, it has no smoke problem. The new KLJ-7A radar can simultaneously track 15 targets and engage 4 targets. It increases the combat capability of the aircraft dramatically. So, JF-17 finally catches the 4th plus features with the Block 3 model. The two-seat conversion trainer variant, JF-17B, has an extended dorsal spine and a more swept-back tail. This model can carry fuel in its vertical stabilizer, which is not an option for the single-seat JF-17s. Soon, the JF-17Bs will be upgraded to Block 3 standards. Some aircraft are equipped with Aselpod targeting pod to enhance their precision strike capability. Myanmar, Nigeria and Pakistan are the current users of the JF-17. Also, many countries have expressed their interest. The JF-17 has a length of 14.93 meters, a wingspan of 9.44 meters and a height of 4.77 meters. Its wing area is 24.43 square meters. The aircraft's empty weight is about 6,586 kilograms, while its maximum takeoff weight is 12,384 kilograms. One 84.4 kilonewton Klimov RD-93 afterburning turbofan engine provides a top speed of Mach 1.6. The aircraft can reach a range of 2,500 km. The JF-17's combat radius is 800 km. 
its service ceiling is nearly 17,000 meters, in other words, 55,510 feet. The aircraft has one 23mm twin barrel Gusha 23 2 gun and seven hardpoints with a capacity of 3.7 tons of ordnance. The JF 17 can carry the PL 5E2, PL 9C, PL 10E, PL 12, PL 15, R Darter air to air missiles. CM-102, MAR-1, LD-10 anti-radiation missiles, C-601, C-705 KD, CM-802 AKG, CM-400 AKG anti-ship missiles, and ROD-2 cruise missile, as well as different types of bombs. The Pakistan Air Force had already used the JF-17s in combat missions. These aircraft bombed terrorist positions in North Waziristan near the Pakistan-Afghanistan border in 2014 and 2017. A Pakistani JF-17 shot down an Iranian military drone near the Pakistan-Iran border in Balochistan in 2017. In 2019, Pakistan claimed that a JF-17 shot down an Indian MiG-21, yet the Indian sources denied the incident. As mentioned before, the previous variants of the JF-17 barely fulfilled the conditions to be a fourth generation fighter. Only the Block 3 variant inducted to the Pakistan Air Force in March 2023 is in these standards. The JF-17 does not offer a breakthrough in military aviation. Still, we should accept that the aircraft is a fruit of a highly successful program. The concept of success depends on the player and the point of view. Of course, the JF-17 program is not a success for the major Western aviation industries. But it is a non-negligible achievement for Pakistan regarding technological capabilities and program management. Many of our viewers may claim that the main rival of the JF-17, the Tejas, is a more successful combat aircraft. We agree to that. But the Pakistan's target and the way to reach this target was more realistic in this program. As mentioned in our Tejas video, the Indians executed the LCA program as a national pride matter. They kept the bar high. Dalhi has aimed to compete with the Western world. But the urgent needs of the Indian Air Force forced India to acquire the Rafales and Su-30s. On the contrary, the Pakistanis focused on the needs and chose a more pragmatic way. They needed a simple aircraft to replace the obsolete second and third generation combat aircraft. The aim of Islamabad was not to prove itself against the former colonial powers of the West. A fighter which could fly decently and fire modern missiles was enough for the Pakistanis. They were open to working with other countries. It was just a business, not a national pride matter. Islamabad did not have a big budget to build up an aviation industry. It would have to be cheap to achieve this dream. And Pakistan managed to keep the budget low. Thanks to the joint development program, Pakistan enjoyed the Chinese co-financing. India and Pakistan have different threat perceptions. India has to deal with both China and Pakistan. But Pakistan has no true enemy other than India. And the wars in 1965 and 1971 showed that India had no intentions to invade Pakistan. So, a simple aircraft is enough for Pakistan's interests. The Pakistanis have improved the JF-17's capabilities block by block. The combat capabilities of the Block 3 variant will be enough to fight against the other 4th and 4th plus combat aircraft. On the contrary, India has always felt the threat of invasion by great foreign forces. The Indian Air Force needs advanced combat aircraft to prevent this apocalyptic scenario. India cannot follow the way of Pakistan. Besides, as mentioned in our many other videos, many countries need low-cost simple fighters rather than fifth-generation ones. This market is easy and profitable for a new aviation company. To compete with big players like the USA, Europe or Russia is not wise for a beginner. Thanks to the joint development program, Beijing's influence helped find new customers for the JF-17 in the international market. Pakistan may never have succeeded in selling the aircraft alone. India desires to compete with big players whereas Pakistan tries to reach the market which they ignore. 
and it has already succeeded it. The circumstances and pragmatic thinking have helped pack send success. If we compare the JF-17 with other competitors, we can define it as not-so-successful aircraft. But for Pakistan, it represents an impressive achievement. Thanks for watching our video. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click the bell button to be notified of our new videos. Also, you can now click the join button to support our channel. And as always, we would greatly appreciate all of your likes, comments and shares.